Warning, the following podcast fucks. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Aura Frames, My Sheets Rock, Factor, and by whatever invisible force field of good fortune keeps Eli alive despite his driving. Holy shit, somehow it's always worse than I remember. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Scathing Atheist? What is that? Is that a podcast? I have never heard of Scathing Atheist before. What do you mean we evolved from filthy monkey men? That sounds made up. Sounds more made up. This fake news that we evolved from filthy monkey men. Unless, unless we did evolve from filthy monkey men, in fact. But who would know? I would not know. I do not. I'm not in the business of knowing things. It's June 13th. And it's World Softball Day, but I could never get into the sport. Why is that? Because <laughs> the pitches be crazy. I, no illusions. Boo. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Samuel Alito's godly New Jersey, mm-hmm. Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, and Waycross, Georgia, this is the Skating East. Oh, this week's episode, the American College of Pediatricians want to play doctor. Alex Jones is crying right now. Regardless of when you listen to <laughs> And you get to hear what our pajamas sound like. But first, the diatribe. It's interesting watching the media come around to our view, isn't it? I mean, seven or eight years ago, every time you turned around, there was another mainstream article about how we atheists needed to chill the fuck out, right? We were drowning in these unholier than thou think pieces about how we should all just get along. We're in far center. Faithists would ignore all the red flags of theocracy and chastise us for describing religion as fairy tales and hurting someone's feelings. Of course, those stories are still out there. But far more often, we're getting stories along the lines of, okay, maybe the atheists were a little rude, but it turns out they were right about, you know, the Christians coming for contraception, public education, psychiatric services, and the very concept of democracy the instant the popular vote turned against them as it happens. And such was the case last week when the Washington Post ran an expose about taxpayer money going to religious schools that might as well have been called, holy shit, turns out Noah was right. But they forewent that title in favor of the slightly more universal, quote, billions in taxpayer dollars now go to religious schools via vouchers, end quote. And of course, that was the whole plan with vouchers from day one, wasn't it? They were originally sold as a means of holding underperforming schools accountable and helping low-income students get a better education. But you could tell that was horseshit from the outset because the only people who ever advocated for them were on the side of the political spectrum that gives zero fucks about helping low-income students get a better education. What's more, pretty much every group that actually helps low-income students warned that voucher programs would be a fucking disaster for students in underperforming schools. But despite all the warnings, they slowly started to roll them out. And lo and behold, all us naysayers who said this is a Trojan horse to fund religious schools with tax dollars turned out to be right. And now, according to the Post's analysis, more than 90 percent of the funds going to private schools through voucher programs are going to religious schools. They looked at the states with the most expansive voucher programs, by which I mean the few states that have like a Anybody who wants a voucher gets a voucher level accessibility to their program. And what they found was that in Ohio, about 91% of voucher recipients are religious schools. In Wisconsin, it was 96%. In Indiana, 98. Now, so far, there are only a handful of states that have voucher programs that are universally accessible or nearly universally accessible. But the thing that's been holding them back until now was the questionable legality of forcing non-religious taxpayers to fund religious education. But now the Supreme Court has ruled that not only is that legal, but it's fucking mandatory. So there's nothing standing in their way but red tape, and that's falling away. There are now 11 states where all or almost all students are eligible for vouchers and another 18 states and one district that have a more narrowly accessible voucher program, but ones that still fund religious institutions regardless, right? Because the fucking Supreme Court says you have to. 
And of course, to truly understand how egregious this is, you have to consider all the legal exemptions that religious institutions already have, right? I mean, this isn't just a case where I'm now paying for a school that teaches young earth creationism. I'm also being forced to fund institutions that fire people for being gay and kick out students for having gay parents. I'm being forced to pay for a school that denies the very existence of trans people and has a special exemption to laws about gender equality. That's what we're paying for now. And while vouchers might be the most egregious way they're letting churches rob the public coffers, they're hardly alone. Even the money going to public schools is being tossed over the wall of separation more and more. We're spending taxpayer dollars hiring Christian chaplains in place of school counselors in Texas. We're spending them on Ten Commandments signs in Louisiana. We're paying teachers to present alternatives to the theory of evolution in West Virginia. Right In Oklahoma, the state Supreme Court is weighing whether the state can directly fund a religious charter school. And, and let's be clear about what we're actually doing here, right? We're abandoning the very concept of public education. We're giving up on the idea that the state should pay for every kid to learn the basics that they're going to need to thrive in society. Instead, it's now only required that we teach them something. Doesn't matter if it's useful, doesn't matter if it's true. And for all their bullshit about vouchers being a vehicle for school choice, they sure don't give a fuck about my choice to not pay for their lies. Right. In the in the article, they quote one Brian Hickey, the executive director of the Catholic Conference of Ohio, who says, quote, it's the parents money to use as they see as best. We don't necessarily see it as taxpayer money, end quote. And while I'm sure he has to tell himself exactly that five times in a row to sleep at night, it's still a fucking lie. The point of public education is to educate the public. If parents abdicate that responsibility by sending their kids to a school of make-believe, they have forfeited every right they have to those funds. Hell, the fact that we even allow schools of make-believe is already pretty fucked up and worthy of some serious reconsideration. But the idea of bleeding the real schools dry on their behalf is worth no consideration at all. And look, it's frustrating as hell for those of us who have been playing the part of Cassandra through the process, right? It's frustrating as hell to watch the Washington Post wander up to this forgotten speed bump of rubble and say, hey, didn't there used to be a wall of separation here? But later, no, they are starting to show up to the party. And if we find a way to welcome them in, it could still be a banger. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Bill and Ted to my Rufus, Heath Enright, and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to be excellent to each other? You hear that, Heath? I'm Keanu, and you're <laughs> afraid of Napster. <laughs> I think you like Napster. I also went to NYU, if I'm that How guy. Dare right, you. Well, well, clearly you Go guys violence. didn't understand the be excellent <laughs> assignment at all. So we're going to pause for a review, and while we do that, we'll offer up a word from our first sponsor this week, Aura Frame. Okay, how was that one? Still bad. Ah, dang it. Yeah. Hey, guys, what you doing? Yeah, Eli's freezing me in carbonite. Sure. Yeah, why? Father's Day. Okay, so now you've actually lost me. Okay, so what do I always say I want for Father's Day? To freeze your son in time so that he'll never grow old or feel pain. Feel pain, exactly. Well, Heath here rustled me up some carbonite for Father's mm -hmm. Day and volunteered to oh. be my test subject. Yeah, technically, just the first thing. And as soon as we work out the kinks, bam, toddler forever, baby. It's going to be the best. Right. Look, Eli, if you want to preserve your most precious memories for Father's Day, why don't you try an aura frame? My junk is still metal. I mean, what's the, what's the aura frame? Aura frames are beautiful Wi-Fi connected digital frames that allow you to share and display unlimited photos. It's super easy to upload and share photos via the Aura app. And if you're giving the Aura as a gift, you can even personalize the frame with preloaded photos and memories. It's true. We bought one for both my mom and Anna's parents. And you can set it up in the box, so all they have to do is plug it in and watch their favorite photos. It is such an amazing gift. And right now, Aura has a great deal for Father's Day. Listeners can save on the perfect gift by visiting AuraFrames.com to get $30 off their best-selling frame. That's A-U-R-A Frames.com. The deal ends June 18th, so don't wait. Use code SCATHING at checkout to save. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Heath. Guess it looks like I won't need your carbonite after all. You... Want to get back and record the show? Yeah. All right. Just give me a second. Is it because your junk is still metal? Yup. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, when I first started pointing out that the word Christianity had descended into a synonym for bigotry, I expected that Christians would get upset about it. 
or at the very least, I didn't expect them to adopt it as the cornerstone of their judicial strategy, but they did. Mrs. Alito just really likes flags. She really likes (laughs) rectangles of fabric. It's her interest. Well, her interest. Well, so the the one I was actually referring to comes to us from Vermont, where the Alliance Defending Freedom is suing the state for their refusal to place foster kids with avowed bigots. Yeah, that would be like if a football team who got caught cheating made cheating their entire strategy. Ah, shit, I'm talking about the Patriots again, aren't I? I talked about mm. the Patriots. Well, assuming the Patriots, like teamed up with Russia to hack the NFL Rules Committee election and install Pat's operatives as referees oh, yeah, all over right. the country. Yeah. Or something like that. I'm not <laughs> right. saying that's impossible, but it would be like, don't make me defend the Patriots. You're making me defend the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so this case centers around two couples, Katie and Brian Wode and Rebecca and Brian Grant. I love that it's two Brian. Yeah, right, so and it's a, it's a two Brian. <laughs> it's a Brian and a Brian with a Y, yeah. So they both had taken in foster children in the past and wanted to do so again in the future, but the state revoked their foster care licenses after they said they would not accommodate transgender children. Or, as their hate group attorneys put it, quote, the couples expressed their religiously inspired and widely held belief that girls cannot become boys or vice versa, end quote. Which, to be clear, is a belief that they are allowed to have. Right? They're even allowed to believe that that's an acceptable definition of transness, but the state isn't and shouldn't be obligated to give children to people who think that shit. Yeah, so we plan to abuse some of the kids you give us. Why are you closing your notebook? Don't you want to know the list? I'm going yeah. <laughs> to give you the list. We do not. And then don't give us them. Are you Australian? <laughs> Now, of course, the suit is using that new and ever malleable definition of religious discrimination that essentially means not getting what I want whilst being Christian. But as I'm sure you've already guessed, Vermont is placing foster kids with Christians. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no, no, no. No. As it turns out, most of the foster kids Vermont places are with Christians. Oh, that doesn't sound. Let me check that. I'm a Google. Yeah, right. No, How clearly they're Christians not in Vermont? being discriminated oh, against <laughs> based on their religion. They're being discriminated against based on their discrimination. Yes. Hey, Christianity, when the Venn diagram of bigots and you is really close to a circle, that's your fault, not the fault of like set theory or the state or whatever. (laughs) Exactly. Or circles. Yeah. So what flipped the switch was that both couples said you know, to the state that they would not affirm the gender identity of a trans kid in their home. And since Vermont can't ultimately know whether the kid they're placing is trans, they can't be trusted to safely care for any kid the state might give them. Right. And even if they could, right, if you put no black ones on your adoption survey, you probably shouldn't be like shaping a life in mind. Right. Yeah, huh? exactly. Right. No. Right. And look, Not that placing kids with bigots isn't already bad enough, but you have to consider the full scope of the precedent should the ADF win this case, right? Because we're not talking about religious identity. Again, we're talking about religious belief. So what about parents who agree with that widespread biblical belief that sparing the rod spoils the child, right? Would states be required to allow abusive, physically abusive parents to take in foster kids? And given the robust link between familial acceptance and self-harm amongst trans kids, Is there really a difference between those two scenarios? No. And in news from the Falun Gong show. (laughs) When we released our segment on the Falun Gong cult on last week's show, as we gathered for our yearly pajama party, they were obviously very grateful for the press. (laughs) And so, in order to keep our content current and on the cutting edge, even when recorded more than a month before release, The folks over at Falun Gong's fake news outlet, the Epoch Times, went ahead and got themselves arrested for a $67 million multinational (laughs) money laundering scheme last week. And I, for one, am very grateful to them. Okay, and very interesting timing because also last week, I saw the Falun Gong symbol on my pancake. Now, that symbol often has a swastika by the way, so I figured it was just like a normal Jersey Diner thing that we were doing. <laughs> but maybe Atheist God is doing signs. I don't yeah, know. Never well, know. Right, right. No, it turns out Atheist God has been sending us signs this whole time. He's just, you know, shaped like toast, so you don't generally notice. <laughs> Up there in heaven, what more can I do? <laughs> right. 
So first off, big thanks to Jamie, who was the first to send us this news to scathingnews at gmail.com. You can send us atheist news to scathingnews at gmail.com, safe in the knowledge that we'll never have $67 million, let alone launder that money. A promise certain cult media outlets can't make you. Okay, so now, but to be clear, if you've got $67 million you need laundered, you can... You can talk to us. Eli does not speak for the company in this. I, exactly. That's right. I want to be clear. Yeah. So here's the story. As we mentioned last week, the Epoch Times is a fake news outlet controlled by the Falun Gong cult, widely aimed at pushing their right wing agenda by looking like a newspaper website to boomers for whom Google still means look at a pretty lady too long. And They've been sketchy since their inception, right? They publish fake news, misinformation about the COVID vaccine, and a series of anti-trans documentaries that make Matt Walsh look like a fair and balanced reporter. Well, apparently, that wasn't quite enough money. Because as I said at the beginning of the story, this week, Weidong Bill Guan of Secaucus, New Jersey... Uh, ooh, ooh, are we doing... Thank you. We were there. ...appeared before a federal judge in New York on charges of conspiring to commit money laundering and bank fraud. Okay, might be Bob Menendez in a costume at that trial, but we're not sure yet. <laughs> we gotta check, gotta check. We'll find out. Yeah, so according to Fortune, quote, federal prosecutors said members of the company's Make Money Online team, which was managed by Guan, used cryptocurrency to, quote, knowingly purchase tens of millions of dollars in crime proceeds, including funds from fraudulently obtained unemployment benefits that were loaded onto prepaid debit cards. Prepaid debit cards? Maybe we get rid of those, right? Like, it's either a retail bonus or international terrorist. Like, those are the two mm -hmm. things that's for. Yep. I feel like we can lose <laughs> both and it's fine. I got one of those prepaid cards as a bonus from Comcast, my ISP. And every time I used it in person, I had to be like, hey, not a human trafficker. I'm not. This is a Comcast. <laughs> but here's the email that shows that I got it from Comcast. Yeah, I, right, right. I, had, I have it out on my phone. It's my, my zip code. My background. Allow me to look it up on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Normal. <laughs> Well, and I know I know you're talking about prepaid debit cards, but same thing even harder with cryptocurrency, right? The, 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 this story is unnecessary crime enabling currency squared. <laughs> okay, Noah. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that we were stuck in ancient Mesopotamia. <laughs> hodl, everybody. It's going to go crazy. <laughs> it actually is if you hold. It sucks. It sucks, but it's true. It's going yeah. well for a short term, but then yeah. eventually some guy who has most of the cryptocurrency in the world is going to be like, I want $8 million, and then it's all going to crash. Benjamin gonna Freed's be getting in less trouble because Bitcoin went back up and he lost people <laughs> less money, as it turns out, by the end. That's true. He got ridiculous. Reduce. Okay, so Epoch Times was not named in the incident, but was instead referred to as a multinational media company. Epoch Times released a statement saying, quote, the Epoch Times has a guiding principle that elevates integrity in its dealings above everything else. The company intends to and will fully cooperate with any investigation dealing with the allegations against Mr. Guan. In the interim, though Mr. Guan is innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, the company has suspended him until this matter is resolved, end quote. And then, in the shadiest follow-up sentence ever written in the press... Fortune pointed out in their article that the media company's revenue jumped approximately 410% when the alleged <laughs> money laundering began. <laughs> okay, were they doing a crazy Eddie and like yeah. running their money back into their <laughs> stupid fucking newspaper? I love the idea that they didn't know, right? Like they were just all sitting up there going, y'all, Guan is killing it with the fucking classifieds this quarter. <laughs> it was called the Make Money Online team. <laughs> what the fuck did you think he was doing? You think he's doing poker? I've heard you get five free spins if you sign up for those apps. I bet I did We're that. selling thousands of classifieds. You're taking a lot of surveys, you know, because when you, when you take a lot of surveys. Yeah. So yeah, the chances that they're, again, I will remind you, CFO yes. was independently <laughs> laundering money seems ah, slim. But, you know, maybe the court will accept improperly spinning tummy chi as a legal excuse. Well, it is, in fact, 2024, and stranger things have happened. Next up in headlines, in Pentecost of doing business news, well done. we have a story <laughs> about a snake bite and lunatic evangelist. Kent Hovind. To be clear, he's not a Pentecostal preacher. And he wasn't handling a snake during a sermon. It just worked for the headline thing at the beginning. But he is a biblical 
literalist. So he probably believes he could do that. And more importantly, the actual story is possibly even dumber. He got bit by a rattlesnake and then proceeded to attempt a secret alternative to antivenom known as electrocuting yourself with a taser what? in order to zap hey, out hey, the hey. venom. It went badly. Do not do that. Unless you are Kent Hovind, in which yes. case, please <laughs> keep doing that. <laughs> also, I heard the snake secretly got your balls when you yeah, were right. Looking. No, so, it's very uh, important. <laughs> yeah, follow up. Gotta get it. Also, I don't know who told him that he could taste snake venom out of himself, but I owe that person a thousand dollars. We sure do. <laughs> just, we sure do. Just shoot me an email, claim your prize. And a big thanks to Zach as well for sending the link to scathingnews at gmail.com. So just in case anyone's new, here's a little background on Kent Hovind. He's a young earth creationist, a tax protester, a convicted felon who got 10 years in jail, the tax protest went very badly. Yeah, it's a bad mm -hmm. protest. <laughs> he's a, a failed theme park owner. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy whose Wikipedia has a section called domestic abuse, a dedicated section to that. That section includes the words estranged wife and body slam. He's a yes. garbage, garbage human being. He's also the brand new recipient of a citation needed episode coming up that I started oh, writing today good, yeah. as I was reminding myself about Hoven's backstory. One other crucial C. Ruschel detail. Christopher Ruschel detail. During a seminar that he gave, he told the story of an atheist who asked him, why would a loving God make venomous snakes? And Hoven <laughs> responded in his own story that he's telling by saying, almost exact quote, yeah, it's a tough one. Solid, solid question. I don't really know the answer. Anyway, I heard there's a guy who figured out you can zap away snake venom by electric... <laughs> yourself with a taser. Maybe a, maybe a loving God made that too. I don't know. That was the end of his explanation. But Heath, if I was God and I had made Kent Hovind, I would also <laughs> have to make venomous snakes <laughs> to trick him into zapping his ball. Right. right. This yeah, is in exactly. serious ways. I, it's all coming together. But that does spur one to ask if Kent Hovind thinks tasers are naturally occurring. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that brings us to last week when Zach's link took me to a truly delightful video made by Kent Hovind on purpose explaining the snake and taser equivalent of sitting on his own balls in his own live stream show. So Kent was walking out the front door of his church and he saw a snake. This is the story he's telling on his live stream. And he assumed the snake was his daughter's pet snake that they keep in a reptile room with her turtles. What he actually saw was a rattlesnake, not a pet one. Apparently, his daughter has a pet rattlesnake or something that looks very similar. And that pet often wanders around the church grounds freely. So he bent over to pick it up and he got bit multiple times by the rattlesnake. Amazing. So he's telling that story during a live stream and he's getting questions in the chat. And he's answering with, seriously, Bible verses about Christian snake miracles mm -hmm. during those questions. And then somebody asked doesn't an electric shock neutralize the venom? I thought I seen that on one of your seminars, exact words. And Hoven says, yeah, I did a shock on my hand where I got bit, but I didn't have a strong enough voltage. So I just went to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, fucking C batteries? No, we don't have C batteries. Let's go to the hospital. Okay. <laughs> no, I feel like you just got to shock more sensitive parts when you don't have enough. Kent, Kent oh, come Oh, that's back. what We're it is. All right. This. So, Do the bat over my cut. Pick up snakes with your balls from now on. So, just to be <laughs> pick up snakes <laughs> with your mowels. <laughs> Just to be extra clear pick about the electrocution antidote concept and what Eli is singing about, don't do any of that. <laughs> no. Unless you're Ken Hovind. Here's a little extra context. Some guy in Arizona heard about the zappy technique and tried to use it after getting bit by his pet rattlesnake, which apparently is a thing. I was joking, for the 15th time. Jesus. He got bit by his pet rattlesnake 14 times and then again and then he tried to do this thing off to a really bad start and it gets worse apparently the guy had a venom pact with his neighbor never and they both agreed to use <laughs> the electrocution method if the other guy ever got bitten by a venomous snake so the bite happened the guy and his neighbor i guess they couldn't find the taser or the stun gun that they wanted so the neighbor 
connected the guy's face to a spark plug on his car oh, Jesus with a metal Christ. wire and some clips. <laughs> yep. Then the neighbor started the engine and revved it to 3,000 RPM for about five minutes. Eventually, they also called an ambulance and the EMTs arrived to see a guy unconscious in a pile of his own shit, obviously, connected to a car engine by his face by the other guy who's also there. This was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> so Snakebite Guy got airlifted to a hospital and he barely survived. Can I say something brave? If you hook your face up to a car battery to cure your 15th snake bite, we should not use aeroplane technology no. to save you. Nope. nope. Your ass gets Flintstoned to the hospital. Yeah. Honestly, nothing. Just, I think everyone sort of stands around for a little bit. And we're just like, shh. Yeah, and they just I sort of like, uh, we're going to be heading out now. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Thank you for your service to genetics. So following the incident, emergency doctors later wrote a report entitled approximately, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't shock yourself to deal with snake venom. The report explained how the two idiots landed on their electrocution pact based on reading an article from an outdoorsman's magazine, and also mentioned that 7,000 snake bite stun guns were sold in the U.S., probably Fuck in yeah. those magazines, before they got banned by the FDA eventually. And in the end of the story, the bite victim actually got the Ig Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1994. And then fast forward three decades, and Kent Hovind tried to do the same thing, but just didn't have enough voltage. Very oh, sadly. God. Well, one of the few things Kent Hovind and us agree on is that he did not shock himself with a high enough voltage. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's the official position of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, uh, yeah, exactly. LLC. And in Blind Misleading the Blind News, one of the weirdest contradictions of religious institutions is their self-image, right? Despite being the driving force behind every bigotry you care to name, they represent themselves as organizations of equality and fairness. In spite of holding back trillions in tax dollars, they claim to feed the poor and help the needy. They sing that song, Jesus loves the little children, and also they keep molesting kids, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we got another great example of the canyon between what churches say and what churches do this week as a blind woman in Bryan, Texas was denied access to her church because they didn't want her to bring in her service animal. Jesus. Okay, we said our Messiah can heal that. <laughs> it kind of makes us look bad if you bring in the dog in. We have this whole walk by faith, not sight anything. To, you're, probably, you're fucking that up too. I don't know. <laughs> Stop stumbling. <laughs> so first of all, a big thanks to Chris for sending us this story to scathingnews at gmail.com. Chris, we see you. And we could say that because we're chill. Yep. Mm -hmm. So according to Mari Ramos, her church, which went unnamed in the story because news organizations are fucking cowards, they wouldn't allow her service dog, Betty, and therefore her to enter the building due to a band and flashing lights not being appropriate for a service animal, which, first of all, that's not your fucking decision to make. And second of all, patrons and also my co-hosts, look at Betty. I put a picture of her in the show notes. Are you telling me that Betty doesn't love to fucking party? She tongue. She's delightful. Betty's the life of the party when she's off the clock, but she's a professional, unflappable guide when she's working. That's their whole thing. But regardless, the church band, fucking Kyle and the Apostles, aren't going to quote, <laughs> rock so fucking hard for Jesus, you can't handle it, like it says right. on the website. Right. Also, I want to meet the guy who said we didn't let the blind lady in because of all the flashing lights with a straight face. I want to right. meet yeah, that exactly. man. <laughs> and look, I, I'm not just bringing up this story to point out that churches are hypocrites and bigots, right? All the stories we report on on this show do this. No, I point this story out because what you might not know is that what this church did is 100% legal. It's absurd. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Americans with Disabilities Act has exemptions for religious Has institutions. exemptions, period. Yeah, and, and I want to be clear. This is not like Argle Bargle Supreme Court shit decided later. It was put into the law when it was written. Yeah. Right, no, when this, we decided as a country to finally treat disabled people fairly, when I was a fucking teenager, 
our national caveat was, well, obviously not churches, but everybody else. Yes. Yes. And look, I I know there are people out there who sympathize with other religious exemptions to law. Stop. You should stop Mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah, I was going to say, none of them are on this this podcast. (laughs) But those people are out there, right? For the life of me, I cannot think of a good reason for these exemptions. In fact, when I looked it up to see like what the fuck the lawmakers who wrote the ADA said the reason for these exemptions were, the only answer I could find was, well, lots of churches are old and ramps might mess them up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not only is this church not named in the news story, but even if they were, there would be no real consequences for their actions. It sounds like America to me. Yep. Okay, so I did some research. You mentioned that the story didn't tell us what church did this. So assuming the church that denied Ms. Ramos and delightful life of the party, Betty, was in downtown Bryan, Texas. It's about, about a square mile. Then the church is either... New Chapel Baptist, Galilee Missionary Baptist, Pleasant Grove Baptist, Shiloh Baptist, Allen Chapel AME, Agape Christian Center, so many more. I went to the map to try to figure this out, and I was like, oh my God, one square mile is like 85 churches. Yeah, well, it's one of those, so. Yeah, exactly. So with those 74 choices, you know, get canceling, everybody. All right. Well, now that you've got your homework, I guess we can pause for a word from our second sponsor this week, My Sheets Rock. Coming this summer, a new creature feature by Super Director the Planet comes Attack of the Killer Summer. Oh, no. We've chosen to live south of the Mason-Dixon line and don't live inside an air conditioner. Whatever will I do? If only we'd gotten the regulator sheets from My Sheets Rock, Diane. But Biff, what are those? My Sheets Rock created the regulator sheets, which are designed specifically to keep hot sleepers cool and cold sleepers comfortable. They regulate temperature, wick moisture, stay breathable, and they're so soft, you'll sleep comfortably every night. That's because these sheets are made from best-in-class bamboo rayon, which transfers body heat two times more effectively than regular sheets and reduces humidity by 50%, so you can experience your best night's sleep yet. Why, that would stop this killer in its tracks. Indeed it would, Diane. Uh, Announce a voice? Not announcer voice, Diane. Me, Eli Bosnick. My Sheets Rock sent us a set to try when they became a sponsor, and they quickly became my favorite sheets. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse My Sheets Rock. I don't know. What do you think, Diane? He sounds like one of those socialists. What if we don't believe you? Don't believe me? Their 2,200 five-star customer reviews speak for themselves. Plus, they offer a 90-day risk-free trial and free shipping and returns. Check out My Sheets Rock at MySheetsRock.com slash scathing and enter our code scathing for 10% off and free shipping. That's MySheetsRock.com slash scathing. Code scathing. Gee golly, thanks. Oh no, it's broken through the door. Run to a cold shower day and run. I'm the killer summer and I'm gonna get you. Y'all can't see, but he's in a costume. I am in a costume, yeah. And in Shamalam some ding dongs news. The American College of Pediatricians pretended to matter again this week and held a press conference urging healthcare professionals to stop offering gender affirming care to minors. And a bunch of right wing idiots fell for it again because if they had the ability to Google, they wouldn't be right wing idiots. Yeah. Yeah, no, in retrospect, it seems weird that we decided to join the side that fact checks, right? It just makes our job so much harder. You guys decided. No, that's true. That's fair. Read my citation needed. So yeah, for those of you unfamiliar with the American College of Pediatricians, um, that's what they're hoping for. It sure is. The SPLC listed hate group, which has about 700 members, are hoping you're confusing them for the American Academy of Pediatricians, the 67,000 member organization that thinks quite literally the opposite of all the opinions of the American College of Pediatricians, which include support for conversion therapy, abstinence-only education, and in the case of this most recent press conference, rejecting gender-affirming care for minors. Okay, I feel like we need to start the, I don't know, like the American College of Alpha Male Doctors getting yoked, crushing it swole or whatever, and see how much (laughs) stuff we can get the bigots to do, right? A lot. Yeah. A lot. 
Well, the, now, I'm sure the good news, though, is that all these right wing idiots who thought this statement was going to be so convincing when they assumed it came from the American Academy of Pediatrics shifted their views upon learning what the source they thought they were relying on actually said, though, right? Mm, so they, not so much. No, it's all so weird. It's weird. Okay. So the content of this press conference is a little bit of like bullshitception. So it's it's hard to debunk. Not not because they're not lying, but because they're lying about what they're lying about. So gender affirming care for minors includes things like puberty blockers and body wraps, which the aforementioned all the fucking doctors group calls life saving and necessary medicine. The ACP, on the other hand, spent most of their press conference fighting the straw they brought with them, calling for doctors to, quote, immediately stop the promotion of social affirmation, puberty blockers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cross sex hormones, what? and surgeries for children and adolescents what? who experience distress over their biological sex, end quote. We'd also like to know when they stop beating their wife. Yeah, exactly. And look, just because they're liars and an SBLC listed hate group didn't stop several of the usual suspects from singing their praises. Uh, Elon Musk retweeted their statement mm -hmm. from the conference, as did the Catholic news agency. Even uh, Michael Shermer retweeted it, though, to be fair, he is very new to skepticism and probably <laughs> didn't know. So yeah, once more for the cheap seats, gender affirming surgery for prepubescent children is a non-existent boogeyman. Every major medical body you care to name agrees that gender affirming care for kids is life saving and helpful. And the people who disagree with that are 700 bigots hoping you'll click on the medical version of goggle.com. Yeah, right. <laughs> and finally, tonight, Anna Bosnick's legions of gay frogs on DD minus are celebrating hard this week after Alex Jones began the process of liquidating all his personal assets Aww. in order to oh, pay yeah. the families of Sandy Hook victims. He currently owes them approximately $1.5 billion for defamation, emotional distress, and of course, causing a giant mob of his insane followers to carry out a terrifying campaign of harassment based on his lying. And while it's very unlikely he'll ever be able to pay that full amount, he's now entering Chapter 7 bankruptcy and pending a final ruling by a judge on June 14th, it looks like he'll no longer be owning InfoWars. Oh, Yeah. He'll either have to sell his stake in the media empire or hand over control to his victims. That could include control of his social media accounts, along with assets like physical ones from the studios of InfoWars for the greatest yard sale of all time that we're definitely going to. Okay, look, I don't want to tell these grieving families what to do with their newly acquired media empire, but if ever there was a writing team here to help you create mockery content, it is the cast of this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> please, right? please call us. I, the idea, though, that InfoWars might continue to exist in someone else's hands is kind of a fucked up bit of this resolution. Right? Like, I mean... Like I, I'm, I'm stoked that Alex Jones is going to lose everything, but this feels a lot like the killer selling the murder weapon to pay their lawyers, right? Yeah. yeah. Some of that's going on. So ever since the trials in Connecticut and Texas that led to the judgments against him in 2022, Jones has been trying every trick in the book to weasel his way out of paying. He started by transferring his assets to family and friends wherever he could. Then the parent company of InfoWars declared bankruptcy. Then Jones declared personal bankruptcy. And that was all just hoping to minimize the damage. Then we got the big judgments against him, along with a delightful follow-up ruling that said the Sandy Hook families can keep going after any future income of Alex Jones for the rest of his life. So last week, based on that, Jones started telling all his idiot fans to stop buying their, you know, like homeopathic dick shots and dominance establishing snake oil and tactical butt plugs at Infowars.com and check out a different site instead. That site is run by his dad. And um, hot take. That guy, the dad of Alex Jones, he needs to get prosecuted too. If you caused Alex Jones to exist, <laughs> you're a genetic terrorist. You have to go. Right. Like, they, Look, the, the Code of Hammurabi has its flaws, but hear me out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I just, I'm sad to see Texas's smartest boy fall so far from grace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, Alex Jones's dad was Texas's yeah, smartest got it. boy. <laughs> 
Big thanks to George for being the first of so many people to send us the link to scathingnews at gmail.com. And a big thanks to the algorithm for actually getting something right. For the last four or five days, the nearly sentient Ultron of the social internet decided to skip all the ads that I normally get for like artisanal cheese holsters and dad bod t-shirts that do nothing to help and even horny women in my area. None of that. All I'm getting <laughs> is one beautiful video clip of Alex Jones weeping. I've watched yeah. it. I'm going to say 800 times and you should too. Yep. During likely one of his last ever broadcasts on InfoWars, Alex Jones said, quote, weep, 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 something, something unintelligible, ugly crying, something, something, uh, that thing when you can't catch your breath and you kind of get the hiccups and you get the weeping at the same time, <laughs> uh, weepy pause with some of those spasms from the hiccups, followed by, this is probably our last broadcast, and then more weeping, end quote. It was the best. Okay, so that clip, 24-7, first programming idea right out of the right? gate, right? You just right? show that. And hey, Alex, in case you're listening, and I know you are, big fan, 100 bucks to the winner if you can talk Mike Lindell into a live-streamed pillow fight to the death. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. We'll hand it directly to the family so you don't even have to oh, there you touch the money. <laughs> Alex. So, based on the insane weeping noise specifically that he made, it kind of seemed like he was doing it on purpose, as part of an act. You think? Like, like maybe he's hoping to get you know, extra sympathy from his fans. But it's also very possible he actually makes that noise when he cries. Either way, this is great. He's either a person with the literal worst natural crying noise of all time, or he was faking it for the show, but he's definitely doing so much real crying by himself every day. Either way, I cannot wait for the yard sale. Going to get Tom and Cecil so much good stuff. Oh, Probably yeah. the best. Gifts for friends. And on that rare nugget of delightful news, we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we'll relive our glory days of last weekend. Hey, podcast listener. You know, after a week in the same house, I can tell you, we sure do have a hard time figuring out what to eat. Heath here prefers foie gras for breakfast. Well, any kind of pay is fine. And Noah is more of a vegetables that don't taste like vegetables fan. I dislike how they exist. But if you've got a house of picky eaters, you need to feed on the fly, you might try Factor. But Eli, what's Factor? Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. I don't know, Eli. Does Factor have enough variety to last all week? They sure do. With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. And again, Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. All right, Eli, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Head to factormeals.com slash scathing50 and use code scathing50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code scathing50 at factormeals.com slash scathing50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. All right, Eli, thanks. So really, no vegetables? Well, they, well, they have too much carbon. Carbon, sure, yeah, there's a lot of carbon in there. This past Saturday, we gathered together for our company tradition, our annual patron-only pajama party live stream. But because we love all our listeners, whether they support us financially or not, and because all the travel had us running too far behind to record a separate C-segment this week, we figured we could share a few highlights with you. Enjoy. So Thurgood asked Nicola, does doing Be Reasonable make Marsh really good at marital arguments? Ooh, is that it? Is that is is that to insinuate he puts up with my bullshit? <laughs> Just in a very reasonable. Um, well, it's, you know, it's probably a boring answer, but I think we know we don't really argue. I think we get on really well. I think that's speaking, I think that's so. pretty. I think that's pretty true. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't. That, that made, I heard y'all playing code names last night. <laughs> don't bullshit me. Yeah, I thought we should be like, yes, we do. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Now, what do you say to people who, for instance, might say we do argue? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
you could say that we don't argue because I'm doing a be reasonable thing. It's like <laughs> yeah. so I'm not going to suggest that's what's happening. But I'm just saying there is one possible version of reality in which case that's what's that occurs. We're talking about a marriage beginning, and we're talking about a marriage ending. Yeah, very yeah. Cyclical, so. <laughs> All right, well, hey, you know, you, you could just get the two for her. It's just never, yeah. you know. You yeah. just, they just, they, all they got to do is leave his shoelaces If he on. dies, they should imprison his corpse. Like, just... There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, they don't do that. They don't do, like, once someone dies, they don't, like, continue to find them guilty or not. Like, someone will die in the middle of a very, yeah. you know, were they the murderer? Were they the whatever? And then yeah. they're like, well, guess that's over. And I'm like, why? Why? I still want to know. Like, yeah. They should put, like, a dummy it. in the seat. Or, the, like, or the corpse, <laughs> like they did with the Pope. Remember the one? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Was that on citation? I, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, no, they, yeah. no I so, still want to know. Like, we want to yeah, know right. what if he would be found guilty. All so, yeah, this should happen. I we would not know any fucking dust. difference. He was falling asleep in the damn trial anyway. <laughs> that's true. He practically what was, was the difference. Yeah, no, exactly. smell better. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he farted. Yeah, exactly. right. yeah no, just the one time after this, and then. It's, I think it's more pleasant for everybody involved, actually, right, if this yeah. is better. Now that I think about it. Awesome. Awesome. So while they're writing that down, Eli, I have a question for you. This is from uh, uh, listener David Bax. Uh, Alex Jones is being forced to sell everything. What trophy item would you most like to claim? I would like to buy, so for those of you who are fellow Knowledge by listeners like me, uh, you will know that for a very, very short amount of time, Alex Jones sold a remote control butt plug called <laughs> the Power Force. What? <laughs> what? Really? I'm entirely distracted. There is a rumor <laughs> that he he put he advertised it and then very quickly had to withdraw it because his listeners were like, "Why are you selling butt plugs?" So there is a rumor that Alex Jones still has a stock of hundreds of Alex Jones remote controlled vibrating butt plugs with the name Power Force. And if that were the case. I would absolutely buy at least one of them. All right, so David, tell me you didn't get your money's worth out of that fucking answer. Huh? Wow. Did so you must legit have just throw a bunch of fucking frogs? I did, but I summoned frogs. This, this, is you you this? this is what I do. This is what I do. Pocket frogs. Pocket frogs. <laughs> she, she just literally pocket frogs. I am the scourge of this Airbnb. <laughs> they will find them for years to come. Pocket frogs. Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> that's Ethan Ann, our new lady, and speaking <laughs> Of new love, it's time for the newlywed game. Relatively speaking, we're in this. So we're going to be joined by our various couples, Marsh and Nicola, (laughs) (laughs) Thomas and Lydia Smith. (laughs) Now you might be saying to yourself, "Wait a second. Some of these people aren't newlyweds, but we're doing this based on the illusions scale. So all of these people are newlyweds compared to the illusions. Okay. Have a notebook. Have a notebook. I don't know if we're old enough to get married on the illusions. I know. <laughs> so first question is, who is your partner's celebrity crush? Wait, don't you normally are we both? Don't we normally do one person is getting answer? That's right. Yeah. So men, you're writing for women now. Okay. Oh. So we're writing. So we're guessing. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Men, you're guessing. Women, women, you're answering. So I'm just writing Anne's celebrity crush. crush. Marsh, who is Nicholas' celebrity crush? It is Johnny Marr of the Smiths. Correct. Johnny Marr of the Smiths. Johnny Marr of the Smiths. Oh, are we supposed to write down? Oh, I'm supposed to write answer my answer to like prove it. Sorry. I trust you. <laughs> that's, that's you would have to write it down. Otherwise, all you would have to do is say yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, here's the thing, what you do is, I'll say mine, and then Nicola, t- uh, yeah, Nicola, t- and then Nicola turns yeah. it around, yeah. Nicola yeah. 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 that's great, okay. Right. Yes. Nicola, who is Marsh's celebrity crush? So, wait, 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 no, yeah. Yeah. he says it, you say it, I'll do the thing that I said. What's happening? It's fine, it's fine. So I should have two pages worth of information right Yes. No, 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 no. Eli has explained this exceptionally yes. badly. I thought, I thought we were both doing both. So he, Sorry, are we doing verbal confirmation of each other's so, what each other has written down? Yes, you will say the thing. Honestly, and Thomas will turn honestly. around to see if, he, if he's got what you said out loud on the paper. Okay, <laughs> so according to Marsh's new rule system, which makes yeah, that's not it's, the, game. It's the British okay. way. It's of literally how the game works. Everyone write down your no. celebrity crush. I never said that. Mark! That's the opposite of what I just said. Mark! Everyone write down your celebrity crush. 
celebrity so crush. Yeah, and we write down on, on two separate pages. No, it's no, it's one page. page. Okay. Just write down your celebrity crush. I got mm. this. <laughs> You guys remember how smooth everything was going yeah. on? Yeah. And, and then I put this guy in charge for one fucking thing, and suddenly it's this chaos. <laughs> <and awesome. laughs> so, so you're gonna you 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 The rules are, I just and they're part of the same thing. I don't think you're buying candy because you're like anti all mass produced candy. You think, oh, I just want to clarify. You think Anne's about to turn her paper over and be like, no, I'm not right. playing. It's going to be so. it's going to be like, I prefer real dark chocolate and I brought some of my own or some bullshit like that. All right, let's see it, Anne. Reject, bring my own dark chocolate. <laughs> Incredible. If you were not planning to get married, that counted as a proposal. <laughs> It's un it's unknowable. <laughs> you know. Game this out. Much like the bites of fish, the rules of the newlywed <laughs> game are unknowable. All right, give me a second. Nicola. Hello. Chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> what is the most physically attractive thing about Marsh? See, I'm so confused because I put down what I put. You would yeah, say about. You're gonna say out loud. So you're gonna say out loud. Just say out loud what you find attractive about me in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> just, it's, it's as simple as that. Totally comfortable. On a video that'll be. There preserved. was that reject option. <laughs> <laughs> reject brought my dark chocolate from home. <laughs> is to give us a legal defense of sovereign citizenship. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so sovereign citizens um, believe we are all secretly under maritime law, fringe on the flag, uh, and that the uh, sheriffs, I believe your municipal sheriffs, should be the highest authority of the land. And I think if you've ever interacted with your local police department, you can agree that's absolutely correct. Best of the brightest <laughs> running that situation. <laughs> so and besides their very correct and real ideas, uh, they have a fantastic flag, I'm not sure if you're aware. Um, vertical stripes, much more slimming. Um, and, uh, so when we are all in our, in our patriotic wear, we're gonna look fabulous. <laughs> And honestly, I, I, I'm here for, for the freedom to look fabulous. So. And, and can confirm, a lot of sovereign citizens do end up in stripes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mine doesn't have anything to do with being a podcast, but some people who get to know Eli come up to me and are like, so is it hard that he's an atheist? And I'm like, I was an atheist before. <laughs> like, what? That's, not a, that's not a dude thing. Like, right. <laughs> Women anyway, could be atheists too. Women could be atheists too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we can also get that answer correct. Anyway, um, so to close it out, I, I'm going to ask you all a question again. Uh, Jean, Jean Chalot. I'm going to say Ooh. Jean Chalot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not a British accent. No. Jean Chalot. Julian Chalot. Jean Chalot. Jean Chalot. Um, uh, Jean Shallot asks, uh, the wives, and the soon-to-be wives, your kids Woo! go and the winner of the newlywed game, let's be real. Yes, the winner of the newlywed game. Yep. Yep. Um, if, uh, if someone asked what your husband does for a living, what <laughs> do you say, and you're gonna, take notes, um, what do you say, do you say podcaster, or do you say something less embarrassing? Um, <laughs> and I guess I'll- What do you do, Jean? <laughs> that I was night owl and so mm -hmm. I was like it's gonna be tough but I drew um I well, okay okay, okay. Uh, that it's in retrospect <laughs> it's not great but I drew, drew an owl I drew a series of arrows moon 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 story. Yes. so yeah moon banana cat is what you could have guessed <laughs> but we'll see I don't know I thought that kind of made the point and someone did I wrote a moon bird, I wrote <laughs> moon bird. <laughs> a very <laughs> realistic definitely a term that would be 
Oh, oh that's right. So hard. You wouldn't try to fit it into you your, know, your right? like pre. Conceived knowledge of what might be on a card, you would just remember. Yours, like, <laughs> yours was quite owl like. That is, that is definitely an owl as per score. I am presented with this. <laughs> Marsh has my back. Yeah, That's 100%. how you know you're wrong. I was given this. Oh, yeah, okay, Moonbird. Alright. So I will do you all the benefit of knowing that the words I'm about to say are based on Leviticus and not just something I think. Alright. Let me tell you how to sacrifice a goat bitch, cut its little throat, which seems a little mean and maybe more than a little gross. It's nothing but when compared to what the Levites bear through. Details of the entrails should be plenty enough to scare you. Fat goes on the pyre, set that shit on fire. Smells red it as hell, but it's the odor God desires. How to kill a bird now, in case you hadn't heard now. Twist its little head until it's dead and then it's burned out. This is for atonement, offer no postponement. Couple jugs of blood as a critical component. Now the proclamation regards. Regarding ordination, right the candles right where you might risk assassination from the Lord. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not do it, guy on die. Thus unto Moses spoke the Lord. Happy Pride Month. Whew. Let me tell you how to eat. Bitch, tell you who to sleep with, tell you how to burn the heretics about that bee witch, tell you about your penis and all its uncleanness. For a god all knowing, I'm not much of a hygienist. Oh, and if it pleases, quickly on diseases, sacrifice a turtle dove if anybody sneezes. Menstrual blood and semen need a lot of cleaning. Best to never catch your horn with those goat demons. Tell you how to shave men who you can enslave men. Tell you how to burn the motherfucks who misbehave. And if you disobey me, I will not just slay thee. Many generations I'll be all up in your game see I'm the Lord thou shalt be pure thou shalt be true thou shalt not get that damn tattoo the sun to Moses spoke the Lord thou shalt speak up thou shalt not cheat thou shalt not dine on rancid meat or stick your dick in things that bleed thou shalt not mix thy rye and wheat thou shalt be just thou shalt be kind shall not trick the deaf or blind touch cadavers left behind let two fabrics be combined thou shalt your God, thou shalt be straight, thou shalt not look to keen with hate, thou shalt never masturbate, don't you put diesel on your plate, thou shalt be just, thou shalt be bold, thou shalt rise up before the oath, don't get your daughter's pussy sold, thou shalt give all my priests thy gold, thou shalt be easily controlled, thus unto Moses spoke the Song. And remember, the Pajama Party is archived, so if you're a patron and you didn't get to see it live, check out the patron feed for a link to the whole damn thing. Trust me, Moonbird is way better with the visual. And thanks again for the folks at Mallet Media who made the whole thing possible. Before we lower the landing gear for this one, I want to thank everybody who joined us for the live stream on Saturday, and I want to remind the patrons you can still check it out in its entirety by following the link that you'll find on our Patreon feed. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be a lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptic Crowd, debuting at 7 Eastern on Monday, and an even newer episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sisters on Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I can't wind things down until I thank Heath Enright for putting the pun in Pundit. I need to thank Eli Bosnick for putting the spurt in Expert. I need to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Lucians for putting the holler in Scholar. I also want to thank Lydia and Thomas and Marsh and Nicola and T and everybody who helped out uh, with the live stream. It was a ton of fun. I also want to thank Nathaniel for providing this week's Farnsworth quote, but most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people whose names I don't have again this week. I'm so sorry, but all the traveling and putting together the live stream has us running way behind, so I'll have to ask for your patience one more time this week, and by then, I will thank you by name. But the key is, for those unnamed people, they are very awesome, and you too could prove your awesomeness by making a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but not in a money way, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following us on social media, and speaking of social media. Tim Robertson handles that for us, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also rolled the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the content info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com.
like six fucking cars are all like swerving around him. I'm like, well, that asshole doesn't know how to drive. And Anna just starts laughing. And I'm like, that is Eli, isn't it? <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.